Hi everyone, my name is Liam and welcome to this video where I discuss what I think the ATP Top 10 is going to look like by the end of next year. Let's get into it. Before we move on to the video, over 90% of you are not subscribed to the channel, so please if you enjoy the content that we make, the videos, the debate that we create, please like, comment, subscribe, it really helps us grow the community and enjoy. This video is going to be a very hard one to make because there's so much good talent on the ATP Tour right now that it's hard to sort of decide who's going to make the cut, who's not going to make the cut in my eyes. I have about, you know, 11, 12 players who I think can make the cut for the top 10 by the end of next year and be, you know, a top 10 mainstay, but there's only 10 positions obviously left. Um, if, you know, if uh, Novak and, and Rafa retired, then this video would be easier. But we we we, we don't want that, first of all, and, and, and I don't think they're, they're going to be retiring anytime soon. I think to keep you guys on your toes, I'm going to go from number 10 to number 1 and then to keep, keep the best till last, but... Um, First up, I'm going to have to go with Yannick Sinner. Yannick Sinner's had a bit, bit of a tough year, say, in 2022. Ranked 15 in the world right now. Uh, I think he won, like, 47 matches, lost about 16. But if you think about it, he's ranked 15. He's been injured for about four months of the season. And he's not gone that far in many big tournaments, That, but he's still not ranked number 15 in the world. I think next year he's got a point to prove. He's going to prove to everyone that, you know, you know, you see that you see the Alcarazes, you see the whole ruins come up and you know, sort of take over. He's gonna make a point of like, you know, guys, I'm as good as you, if not even better than you, on my on my day. So um, I think he's gonna I'm thinking he's gonna have a lot of a lot of points to prove, and he's and he's definitely he's definitely gonna come out here looking looking to to make a, to make a statement and, and get back him get get back into the top ten as a mainstay. If you think about it, the maximum points he's ever gone for a tournament twice the same amount of points this year has been. Uh, has been in the in the uh, in the quarterfinals of the U.S. Open and the Australian Open, where he got 360 points in each of them. So that's not that's not really that much, you know. He, if he you you could easily say Yannick Sinner is a player who should be winning, you know, one two ATP 500 tournaments a year. That's a thousand points he's missed out on this year. With those thousand points, he definitely would have been in the top ten. Um, he's he's one of those players who also at the master at the masters tournament he didn't do he didn't do amazing amazing he reached the quarterfinals in a fair few of them so that's about 180 points uh before that he didn't he didn't some, some tournaments he didn't really go too far he also didn't play every masters 1000 tournament at his best level you know some were coming back from injury some were whilst he was injured so i think i think Yannick Sinner has a very good spot right now where he's not really holding on to too many points from any tournaments because he's not won anything so he's so he's he's not got anything to lose coming into 2023. He can go into any single tournament that he wants. Knows that if he goes far, it's it's good for him because it's he'll be gaining more points than he's lost this than he's lost from last year. I think I think he's in a great spot. It's always about having not having the pressure on yourself to to come into tournament to be like oh I really need to hold the points here you know stuff like that. He's he's not not got that pressure. He's just trying to get matches under his belt and I think he's gonna he's gonna be a top ten next year number ten. Coming in at number nine, I'm going to go for the the second young kid on the block. It's going to be Holger Rune. He's had an amazing 2022 season, obviously winning three titles, one of it, one of which being the uh, the Paris Masters. But if you look at if you look at his campaign in 2022, it really didn't get going until about you know he he had that amazing period where he had um, he had those you know those those great matches on clay where he he won in Munich, obviously you know won won that ATP 250, but then. Other than that, he he had the Roland Garros quarterfinals. That's three hundred and sixty points, but then he didn't really show up or you know have the confidence in him or just the momentum that he needed until about later later in the season. So coming into two thousand twenty three, Holger Rune first of all doesn't have that many points to to defend early on in the season. Okay, if we get if we get to the later stages of the season, he's got he's got a fair few points to defend. But if you look at early on in the season, he's definitely got enough time to make up the difference. Of the points that he lacked throughout 2022 to what he earned towards the later stages of 2022, so he's cu he's currently ranked number 11 in the world. He he's a very very motivated and ambitious young player. So he's he's in, his goal is not even to be top 10. His goal is to be number one in the world. So I think coming into 2023, with the backing of Patrick Moratoglu, his amazing team, and the fact that he's very determined as a young player. He's going to give it his best to get as many points in big tournaments and any tournament really that he plays in early on in the season. You know, in 2022, he did have some streaks where he would go on like six, seven matches losing streaks. Not that wasn't that wasn't too good for his ranking, but the fact that he's still at number 11 in the world 
having had those rough patches shows you that if he doesn't have those rough the, as big of a rough, rough patch in 2023 but every player is going to have a rough patch you know it's you can never be perfect throughout the entire year unless you're Novak Djokovic you know I, I, I would like to say Rafael Nadal but he, he has rough patches unfortunately um, I would say Holger Ruin's in a great position to sort of gain points earlier on in the season you know he he had he didn't gain many points from about January to April time then he gained some points in April didn't gain many points in May gained some points in June and then July to August September maybe you could say he didn't gain many many many, many points and then October onwards he gained so many points he has a great great time span in 2023 where he can gain points as long as he keeps the the momentum going keeps the focus and just shows us why he's he's going to be a big part of the future of tennis. Coming in at number eight, I think it's a player who's been really hard done by in 2022. And I'm talking obviously about Nick Kyrgios. You think about it, you look at his ranking right now, I think he's about 18th, 19th in the world maybe, about 1,800 points. The guy made the Wimbledon final. He would have been so close to the top 10, if not in the top 10, and at the ATP finals and singles, if he would have gotten those points from Wimbledon. He's been very hard done by. You look at you look at his sort of resume throughout 2022. He had he had a he had a very good season. You know he showed us some great talent. He should have gone further at the U.S. Open, but he still got a, you know a good, a good 360 point uh, 60 points from the quarterfinals there. Reached the quarterfinals of a couple of Masters 1000. Didn't play every single Masters 1000. He played about five out of eight. Which you know if he played more, obviously that's more points for him because you don't expect him to sort of lose in the first round of a tournament. Um, he won the Washington Open. That's 500 points there easily. Um, and then he made a semi-finals of a few other tournaments, but they don't, they don't really they don't really come into his ranking because they're, they're, they're quite small compared to the bigger tournaments that he's played in. You know, Kyrgios had a great season, hard done by by the fact that he didn't get the points from Wimbledon. He should have gotten the points from Wimbledon. They shouldn't should should have never done that that stupid. They should have never done the, the Russia ban first of all, and they should have never taken away the points because you can't penalize players for someone else's decision. It's it's quite hard it's quite hard to uh, to see uh, a situation where Kyrgios should not be in the top ten this year. He's uh, he's been an amazing player, and I think he deserves to be in the top ten. He showed us the motivation, which is something that you know we haven't seen in a while from him, if if ever. Um, and the fact that he keeps you know posting about you know on his social media and everything about how determined he is and stuff like that just makes me think 2023 is going to be his year. He, he, you know, he he might even he might even make you know the final of a of a Grand Slam again. If not win a Grand Slam, he's that good. You just just never know what you're gonna get with Kyrgios. But if he comes out we'll bringing his A game like he did this year, and even better, top ten for sure. I think world number eight by the end of the next year. Coming in at number seven, I think it's a player who had an amazing 2022 season. You could say he was one of the standout stars of the year. I'm talking about Casper Ruud here. He's currently world number three, I believe, or number four. About five thousand eight hundred points in his bag. But if you look at his, his ranking breakdown of where the points came from, about 3,800 of those points came from finals of big tournaments. You know, he, he reached the final of the French Open, reached the final of the US Open. Together, that's 2,400 points. Reached the final of the ATP finals, that's 800 points. And then he reached the final of the Miami Masters, which is 600 points. You, you have to, when you look at sort of a situation like this, you have to, you have to ask yourself, He's an amazing player, had an amazing 2022 season. Can he make as many finals of big tournaments as he did this year? My my answer is, yeah, he can. Obviously he can. He showed us the amazing level throughout the entire year. He's been consistent the entire year with his tennis. But as the likes of as you know, as the likes of Sinner, as the likes of Holgerun, Kyrgios, Alcaraz, Djokovic, you know, as these players have a better 2023 season than they had in 2022, even though they had a great 2022 season. How much room is there left for Casper Ruud to both retain those points that he earned in 2022 in those big tournaments, plus get more points from tournaments? You know, there, there was always a sort of dilemma with Casper Ruud in years past where you just look and you're like, oh, well, you know, he stat pads in ATP 250s. He wins a fair few ATP 250s every year. That helps him keep his ranking. He, he reaches the quarterfinals, the semifinals of a few big tournaments, gets some ranking points there as well. But in 2022, he showed us a completely different story. He, he showed us that, you know, he can be a Grand Slam winner. He can beat the big players in the big moments. And he's not afraid of, you know, giving it his best when, when you know, because he's got that, that consistent game. Um... 
I think he's currently ranked world number three or four, as I said earlier. But I think he comes down all the way to number seven. Still stays top ten. Amazing, amazing stuff. But I think his 2022 season was amazing. I'd love to be proven wrong here. First of all, I'll say that I'll be the first person to say I'd love to be proven wrong in this situation. But I think that coming into 2023, he has a lot to defend. It's going to be a lot of pressure on him. And with the fact that, you know, a lot of players are going to be coming into 2023 season, riding a lot of momentum and determined to, you know, break the top 10 or just, you know, break the mould of what the ATP Tour currently looks like. I'm not too sure how much how much room there is for Casper Ruud to to dominate as as he would like to or as 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 he would please to in uh, in 2023. So I think he's going to go down to number seven in the world, but you never know. You never know. Casper Ruud, no one ever thought he was going to do as well as he did this year, but he proved us wrong. So he might he might as well do so in 2023. Coming in at number six, it's a bit of a tough one putting him at number six. I'm talking about Daniel Medvedev here. It's He's currently in world number seven, and you have to think about it in, in a way of like, his 2022 season was nowhere near what we know we can get from Medvedev, but I still haven't seen enough from him to make me feel confident enough that 2023 is going to be a great season for him. Medvedev's had a, had a very big struggle, you could say ever since he lost that match against Nadal at the Australian Open final, he's, he's been struggling so much with internal confidence and the momentum you know he he did obviously reach the final he did reach the final of the, of the Australian Open he did get to the semi-finals I think in Cincinnati uh, he won ha he won Vienna sorry he reached the final of Halle and then won in Los Cabos but you know when you look at it compared to other Medvedev seasons you expect him to win a, a couple of Master 1000 tournaments you know go far at the ATP finals he got no points at the ATP finals this year um, <clears throat> you expect you expect more from him, but I haven't seen enough from him myself this year to to sort of warrant a, a a strong opinion of him being able to you know reach the top two three where he should be. You know he's 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 a he's a top three player with the the consistency that he can bring on court, the serve, and just the you know the ability to wear down opponents. But in two thousand twenty two. The serve wasn't wasn't there as as much as it should have been. I think he's lost a bit of confidence behind that, um, and then I think some of the ground strokes, especially the forehand side, haven't been as good as they as they have been in in, in years past. You can't take anything away from Medvedev, an amazing player, an amazing talent, one of the you know you know the the guy who stopped Novak from reaching the calendar slam. Um, but ever since he lost to Nadal at the Australian Open early in two thousand twenty two. He did lose a bit of confidence, and that and that, that played him throughout the entire the entire rest of the season. I think coming into two thousand twenty three, he needs a few wins early on. He needs a few good good runs into tournaments early on. Uh, he's currently world number seven. I think if he continues to play as he is, maybe a little bit better, he'll 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 get his ranking up to world number six. I would love to see him back in the top five, top three, um, but I need to see it before I can believe it. Uh, but yeah, so I, I think I think Medvedev. Medvedev's going to be uh, world number six next year, but hope, hope to be proven wrong because he's an amazing talent. Coming in at number five, I think it's a player who's been hugely hard done by in 2022, unfortunately due to, to a horrible injury that he sustained at the French Open semi-finals. Um, I'm talking about Alexander Zverev here. You know, Zverev's world number 12 right now. Just about, you know, a year ago, we were talking about him being in contention for world number one. That's how good he is. He is extremely consistent I think if you look at players who have improved the most over the last couple of years, you could say, you know, the likes of Alcaraz, Holger Rune, you so you could say, you know, some other top ten players like Felix Auger Yassim, stuff like that. But you look at you look at Zverev and you say he's a player who burst onto the scene as a youngster, had an amazing sort of momentum going through his early career, beat some big players, won some big tournaments. And then he had an extremely big struggle with confidence, first of all, in his entire game, especially on his serve. And then, you know, stuff that's happening off the court, which, you know, I can't really comment on myself. Um, I don't have all the facts, so I can't really say much. Um, so he's a, play he's a player who's not had the easiest ride over the last couple of years. But the fact that he's been able to, you know, he's been able to gain so many points, 2,700 points, by the fact, by the time that it's only May time, you know, by the, by the time it's only May, he's already gained two thousand seven hundred points, 
and he's not played an entire ATP Tour match ever since. This this guy is going to be back in the top 10 for sure. There's, there's no debate that he's not going to be back in the top 10 next year. The question is, where? I personally think it's going to be world number five. It might take him a few, you know, it might, might take him a few tournaments to get back into his rhythm, stuff like that. But it could easily be, it could easily be world top three or top four. You know, he's he's got the talent, he's got the level of play that he needs to be. Even even last week we saw him. Well, even maybe this week it was. Uh, at the time of filming this video, this week you you saw him play. You know, in the Daria the Daria Cup. Uh, and he played. He played well. Obviously, it's his first tournament back. It's an exhibition tournament. You know, he's not going to be, you know, trying to kill himself on court to win a match when he's there. But his serve, his backhand, his forehand—they were looking good. He was looking good in his movement. I don't see any sort of long-term struggles to get back into rhythm like you know you would see with a Dominic Team type. But I think coming into 2023, Zverev has got everything to gain. He's only played five months of the season this in 2022. He's going to be world number five at least by next year. I think a player who's going to be uh, quite consistent with their ranking from 2022-2023 is going to be Stefano Tsitsipas. Coming into 2022, you know, Tsitsipas had, a, had an amazing season. He reached semi-finals of the Australian Open, won Monte Carlo. That's it. That seems to hit be his tournament now, but you never, you never know with Rafa or something like that. He reached the final of a couple more Masters 1000s and then, you know, won Mallorca and stuff like that. He's, um, he's an extremely good player. The one thing I'm scared about is his coaching staff that he's got around him. I think he needs to get rid of his dad. I think, I think he needs a fresh sort of pair of eyes into his into his camp. He needs someone with ex real real life experience of what it is to be at the top and to win at the top. His dad is an obviously amazing coach for having gotten him so far, but there's only so much that they can push you and so much you can keep that relationship alive. You know that that. That family relationship intact when you're a player slash coach. Uh, your father's a, sorry. Your father's coach slash father. Um, so I think, I think if Titi Pass wants to reach that next level, especially because before the filming of this video, Titi Pass came out with a statement that in 2023 his goal is to be world number one. He needs to change something. I don't think he's going to change anything in his camp. I think his, I think his camp's going to stay the same. So using that sort of as my base, I'm going to say he's going to stay as world number four. He had, he had a great 2022 season. It could have been better. He did flunk in a few tournaments where he should have won. You know, it's it's sort of typical City Pass. He, he gets far, but then he doesn't get far enough. But the fact that he got far, but not far enough, and still is world number four, still, you know, won a Masters 1000 to uh, tournament, reached the final of a fair few others, won a couple other tournaments here and there, sh shows you that if the right things go his way at the right time, it, there, there is nothing that could stop him from being at the top of the game. I just think that with the amount of talent left on this list that you're going to see for the rest of this video, City Pass is going to stay at world number four. I'd love to be proven wrong. Amazing talent, huge serve, love his forehand, love his game style. But unless he changes something in his camp, I think he stays consistent in his ranking. He doesn't go up. Coming in at world number three, it's it's who I would want to be world number one to be honest at the end of the season. But I'm going to go with Rafael Nadal. I think Nadal's had an amazing 2022 season, a season where he's only played about, you know, 10, 11 tournaments, uh, and the fact that he is world number two with having played l not many tournaments, first of all, and the fact that he's won, you know, two Grand Slams, she shows you that you can't ca count this guy out. He's, he's an amazing talent, and he's and at his age, he is still showing that you know, even 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 towards the later end of the season, he, he did struggle a bit. But then you go on the exhibition tour that he went in South America with Casper Ruud. He was showing some amazing tennis there, and he was and he was really really using it as a as a way to get back into rhythm, find his fitness, and just find find his confidence back on court. I think coming into 2023, obviously at the start of the season, Nadal's already got a very huge challenge. He's got the biggest challenge of having to maintain his 2,000 points from from the Australian Open. Personally, I would love to see him win the tournament again. Do I think he's going to win the tournament again? With the current form that he's sh he showed over the last few months, I don't think so. I would love for it to be, you know, the case that he does. But, yeah, with, with the likes of Alcaraz, Djokovic being in the form that they are, even Holger Rune, 
uh, you know, you can never count out someone like Medvedev or, you know, Zverev might have an amazing sort of first to- first big tournament back. It's going to be tough for me to see Nadal winning the tournament again. So I think that's 2,000 points, you know, maybe he'll reach, you know, the, the semis, the final, you never know. But I think that's that's the majority of those points gone. Roland Garros, I think I think he'll win that again. So I think those those points we shouldn't be worried about. I think he can can do better in some of the bigger tournaments, such, such, such as the Masters 1000. He didn't have an amazing season in the Masters 1000s this year. He only he only made the final of one, and that was Indian Wells. You know, Rome, Madrid. He was he was like nowhere nowhere to be seen. Monte Carlo, who didn't even play. Um, so you know, if he's in form and 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 not injured, he can definitely he can definitely get some points going in those clay clay masters one thousand tournaments. You know, Paris and Cincinnati lost in the first first match he played there, so there was no, there was basically no points gained from that. So you could see Nadal's two thousand twenty two season as both of a extremely well in a couple of tournaments and extremely poor in a few other tournaments. So as long as he's able to sort of you know balance it out, get himself the get himself the sort of balance that he needs throughout the entirety of the season. There's no there's no reason why he can't be number three, number two, and if he and if he's if he wins a fair few, if he wins a couple Grand Slams next year, wins a couple Masters one thousand, could be one number world number one. But I'm not holding my breath yet. I'm gonna go with Nadal number three next year. Hopefully, I'm proven wrong. Coming in at world number two, it, once I tell you who my world number two is, obviously you're gonna know who my world number one is. I'm going to go with Carlos Alcaraz as world number two. He had an amazing 2022 season, winning the US Open, winning in Madrid, winning in Miami, you know, reaching the quarterfinals of the French, you know, going, going quite far in a lot of tournaments, winning, I think, a couple, couple 500 tournaments, I think. Maybe, I think, I remember there was Barcelona, and then at the beginning of the season, there was another one. It was on clay, I think. It might, it might have been Rio. Um... He's had an amazing tournament, won so many titles, especially the big US Open title that really helped him sort of clinch that world number one spot. But if you look at it in a in a different way, he has been amazing. But when you are a player of sort of Alcaraz's level, you see, you've seen this with a lot of players who've had a breakthrough season and had an amazing season. Once players start to understand your game style and how to counteract your game style it's harder and harder and harder to stay at the top of the game. I think Alcaraz is going to is going to have a sort of year where he's going to win some big tournaments. Hopefully he wins a grand slam again. Um but with the fact that you know someone like Djokovic or you know Rafa, even Zverev and stuff, you know, they've beaten him in the big moments in in the past. Uh Alcaraz did beat them in big moments this year as well. Um but I think once they study his game more, they understand, now that they understand his game more, it's going to be tough for Alcaraz to sort of dominate as he did in 2022. Even though he's still young, even even Juan Carlos Ferrero said that he's only about 60% of what he could be, um, which is a scary which is a scary fact. I think Alcaraz is going to win a bit, fair few tournaments next year. He's got a fair few points to, to, to obviously defend. You know, he's got Miami and Madrid. He's got the US Open, but... You know, there's nothing stopping him from there's nothing stopping him from winning other big tournaments or defending those titles. He just needs to he just needs to find that consistency, keep that momentum going. Hopefully, he's recovered from his injury quite well by the time the season starts. Um, but I think I think he drops down one spot to world number two because, uh, as you'll see now, my world number one prediction is going to be a very tough one to beat. Last but not least, uh, my world number one prediction is going to be Novak Djokovic. You could say he is the world number one of 2022 just because of the fact that I think he's on 4,820 points. Carlos Alcaraz is on 6,820 points, but Novak did not have two tournaments, basically. Novak was not able to play at the Australian Open, so he he would have at least, at least gone, you could say, you know, 720 points there for reaching the semifinals, 1,200 for reaching the final, even 2,000 for winning the tournament, you never know. Djokovic could have won it all there. So that's 2,000 points where he's missed out on. And the fact that he won Wimbledon but didn't get any points of it. So if you if you don't even think about the Australian Open and you just think about Wimbledon, Novak would have been world number one if the points were still counted at Wimbledon. So the fact that he's world number five right now 
just doesn't doesn't really sit right with many tennis fans. I would say you you you'd say it's very unfair that he is world number five by the fact that he has won Wimbledon. He's won the ATP Finals. He wasn't allowed to play at the Australian Open. He won the Rome Masters. Reached the final in Paris. Won Astana, and I think won Tel Aviv. The guy had an amazing season, even though he's been kicked and kicked, kicked down. So I think 2023 is going to be a season when Novak comes out determined to shut everyone up, determined to come out here and make a point that he is on top of his game compared to anyone else and that he's going to be world number one by the end of the year and achieve oh, how many how many year-end one on ones here? I think seven, six, he's probably got seven, get, get his eighth year-end world number one title and show us that. He's not going anywhere anytime soon. He's there's not much you can say to no, to Novak not being world number one. He should be. He should have been world number one this year if Wimbledon counted in points, and if he had played the Australian Open, didn't. He's world number five next year. The points are going to be there. He's going to be at every tournament, every big tournament. I don't see any issues for Novak being world number one next year.